It is an acrylic painting called Restoration. Hi guys, Deirdre here, All Things Art and Books. How you doing? Welcome back. I've been working on this new project. Welcome to Restoration. It took me about a week to complete. Got the wolf here lying on the hillside. Got the tree here with the shepherd and the sheep. The inspiration for this piece of work, hence why it's called Restoration, is from scripture and it's from the book of Isaiah chapter 11 verse 6. And it talks about how one day the wolf will dwell with the lamb. I knew I wanted to do something with the wolf. I didn't know if I was going to do a full lamb or what. I, I just didn't know. So I just started off with the wolf. The wolf, the reference photo again is from wildlifereferencephotos.com. This video is not sponsored or anything like that. Because the wolf was so large in the picture, I decided to put in the shepherd with the sheep. And of course, the good shepherd is Jesus. Pretty pleased with the way it turned out. So I hope you enjoy the time lapse. So here I'm applying acrylic paint direct to the background and blending it out. I'm just using a little bit of water. I find ironically with acrylic paint that if you just use a little bit of water, it will blend together much more easily, especially when you're wanting a smooth kind of blend. So that's what I'm doing for the background to start with. And then I'll let it dry. So here I've sketched directly onto the canvas using charcoal, a very, very, very basic sketch of the wolf. I find charcoal is great for this because once you apply the acrylic paint on top, the charcoal just disappears. So now starting to apply paint directly to the wolf, just wanting at this stage to get in some basic tones and highlights, some darks, some lights, some medium tones. I'm not worried too much at this stage about fur texture. As long as I'm keeping my brush strokes going in the right direction, that's all I'm interested at this stage. So now I'm starting to work on the eye and I really, really love getting to this stage because I do this quite early on because I like to get a bit of detail, detail in the eye because for me it provides an anchor for the rest of the piece. I know some artists will leave it till the end, they'll do everything else and put the eye in at the end. I like to get just that little bit of detail in and it makes me feel that the rest of the painting flows much more easily for me. Now what I'm doing here is putting some white in on the eye because what has happened is the background is blue and I don't want to start putting the colour of the eye on top of the blue. So I've whited out the bit of the eye that I'm going to be adding the eye colour to, letting that dry before I start to add a little bit of colour to it and that way I'm not getting the blue coming through and interfering with the colour that I actually want the eye to be. Now I'm increasing the contrast dramatically on the second layer in the wolf, making the darks that I want to be a lot darker and the lights a lot lighter and just working away. Again, I'm starting to add a little bit of fur texture, but again, not being too worried about too much detail, just making sure that the brush strokes are going the right direction and the fur just adding a little bit of texture at this stage. dramatically lightening up the face and being more careful now with fur texture making sure that the brush strokes are the right length and also going in the right direction taking a lot of care to use my reference photo at this stage because I want the brush strokes to be the right width the right length and the right direction so that's so important
So adding some orange to the ears and the start of the back of the wolf. I love this orange color and I made sure that I referenced it in different parts of the painting to pull the whole painting together. I'm glazing a little bit of that orange over the wolf's face and the rest of his body. It's important to make sure all your colors are sort of in all areas of your painting so it, it just pulls the painting together better. Add more highlights on the wolf and just keep layering, it's all a layering process. I had originally thought of having the wolf lying across a log, which was actually in the reference photo, but I decided instead to take the log out and just go that he's lying across the hillside instead. I thought it was more um, in keeping with the whole soft tone of the painting rather than just having a hard log in the foreground. So that's why I changed the foreground at this stage. So I now felt I'd done enough work on the wolf and I wanted to work on other areas of the painting. I do tend to jump around a bit because it's good because it just means that you're concentrating on all areas and everything kind of remains balanced and there's not one bit that is more detailed than the other. And I started to work on this. I saw this kind of tree popping out of a brush stroke and that's why I decided to go with it. And I'm just working on the shape of the tree, cutting bits out of it with a little bit of white paint and just getting the shape the way I wanted it. And also put, putting another hillside in the background to have the tree sitting on. And by this stage, I knew that I wasn't going to have a lamb in the painting. I was going to put a shepherd coming underneath the tree with a herd of sheep. And of course, it's the good shepherd, Jesus. So I'm using a very, very, very fine liner brush for this. I'd actually got these brushes. They're a silver fine liner brush and the, the paint flows really, really smoothly off them and I really, really enjoyed using this particular brush. I got a packet of four, but I've only used one of them, but this, this I loved using it. Very, very good for very fine, small detail. So after working on this painting for quite a wee while now, I'm able to really start to ramp up the fur detail in the wolf using the fine liner brush again here to get some details and finally adding in a few whiskers. So it's always nice to get that. It starts to look more realistic when you get to this stage. Love this stage. Here I'm adding some foliage in the foreground. I deliberately kept this foliage very, very flat, very, very plain. Didn't want it to take away from the detail of the, the wolf itself, himself. And now I'm adding some, yeah, I'm just increasing the contrast. I'm adding some, making the darks darker and finer and adding a little bit of detail into the foliage, but not too much because I'm actually going to be glazing color over the top of that. So now I'm glazing some of my colours, glazing some of that magenta colour, some of the yellow over, over different areas of the wolf. Now when I say glazing, I'm using a glazing medium, which means that you can, on some sun rays, as you can see, um, you use a little bit of the colour and use a glazing medium. And what that means is that the colour, when you're adding it to it, the painting is very, 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 very translucent and you're seeing the other colours come through as well as the colour on top and it just really really starts to add depth to your painting the more that you glaze colours over colours over colours and brings the colours together in the whole piece and makes it look more 3D, more depth and just more alive. I love glazing. Some people will glaze with water, um, just add more water to their acrylic paints. Uh, I don't really like that because it the, the, the acrylic paint doesn't bond as well to the 
um, canvas and okay if you if you're gonna varnish over the top of it it doesn't really matter but it's kind of important that you use it'll, it'll stick better if you lose use the glazing medium here I'm adding a few final touches to the ear just increasing the detail there and we are almost done Thank you. 